laid out a circuit to uh, play around with this gate driver here. Pretty serious gate driver. So here I've got the uh, power section for the logic basically laid out with a, uh, it's a variable linear regulator this time. So that's a LM317T and I've got the 5 volt Schmidt trigger uh, set up for the uh, Schmidt trigger oscillator just like the last few. Got the power section laid out with that gate driver there. That is a 650 volt sig fed. So right now, it's just got um, you know one nanofarad shunt capacitor across the uh, drain and source. I'll probably be uh, feeding this driver here, I don't know, a maximum of like 15 volts, I'd say. Maybe 16, 17, something like that, but I don't think I'll push it to 18. So I've got 18 volt zeners. So I've just put a little fan on this thing just in case. Right now, I've got it all the way down, and that's what it's looking like. At, uh, it's probably like 900, 800, 900 kilohertz. And it's pretty fast, but that's already pulling, you know, over two watts. So again, about 12, 12 and a half volts. So we'll start speeding that up to, uh, I'm just going to put it at four megahertz. So right about there. 4 megahertz, we're already pulling close to 6 watts. Alright. I think this particular chip can uh, take something like 750 milliamps maybe. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up higher than that. So let me bring it to like uh, 8 watts. So that's, that's about 8 watts right there. 6 megahertz. Still fairly stiff. That uh, duty cycle starts to increase slightly. And uh, I don't know, that thing probably would be alright running that frequency, no problem. But again, let's say I back it down to about, uh, you know, four or so, like that. And then I up the gate voltage to about 15. Now I'm already at about seven watts at 4 megahertz so that's why uh, I'll probably settle on you know maybe not something as low as 10 volts but you know, closer to 12 and a half seems more reasonable uh, but again you know with this fan on here I can probably push crazy power through there so part of the problem with using the uh, silicon carbide FETs is the just the very fast you know transitions Get a lot of ringing. The ringing is a lot more prevalent than the uh, regular FETs, I guess you could say. Depends on how you drive them, but in this case, I'm trying to, you know, have fairly fast switching. There is quite a bit of ringing, so just kind of randomly got this guy on here right now because uh, I think I've just got the one nanofarad cap combined with this primary single turn. Just kind of made it that way uh, so it could be a little bit of distance from the uh, rest of the circuit. It's like four and a half megahertz something like that so if I cut that on at 26 volts or so that um, primary the, the coupling on it you know it's, damn it's already pulling close to 5 amps um, so that's you know about over 100 watts brings it down to about you know 50 60 pulling that little arc you see I've got the ringing's already pretty bad. So the higher in voltage I go, the worse that's going to get. And it's not quite perfectly tuned. I mean, I still need to play around with it. In this case, it's not so straightforward tuning these different values. Um, but there is a point I tune it where it starts pulling the most current. Which close to about this region here pulls a little over five amps um, I need to back it down to maybe something like that to be able to uh, load it but so while that's not really heating the MOSFET a whole lot um, it can take it it's just that that ringing you know I need to do something about that and here's sort of the effect of changing the gate resistance around so I had two 3.3 ohms in parallel and I've just removed one of them so now I've got 3.3 ohms so that basically slows the rise time 
I've actually got a little switching diode, rever uh, reverse parallel across that, so the fault time is pretty much the same. Um, I noticed if I remove that, it has a little bit of a slow hump there, uh, switching off, so I've just kind of put it back on. But while that doesn't really remove all the ringing, I mean, at least it, it reduces it uh, to some degree. You know, it's still there, right? Still pretty bad, so I might even up that a little bit more. Uh, because I've noticed as per usual even if I've got a you know particular rise time just running the, the gate by itself once I get into class C tuning that uh, waveform sort of stiffens up you know with the right tuning it's at 29 volts it's kind of you know out of tune right that's what it's you know that's what it's looking like maybe I can you know, get a little flame like that so I really need to bring the frequency up to uh, get it more in tune but then it starts ringing real bad the higher I go so if I leave it maybe something like that just a little little bush coming out and I can start to raise that right I can kind of whoops kind of swing it up but then you see what happens you know, obviously that drain voltage starts to shoot up, but uh, that ringing gets worse. So while I can, while it seems like I can actually push a pretty good bush out of there, once I get up to the higher voltages, it starts to get decent, even out of tune like that. I basically need to uh, probably up that gate resistance a little bit more, and then uh, see how that works out when I've actually got the uh, secondary better tuned. It's going to be quite a bit of work you know even at only four megahertz it hasn't been super easy especially with a coil like this so still working on it but i would say technically i could run what i have set up right now with just slight tuning to where it'd be pretty decent it's just uh the sick fit right so if i was using any other fit i probably would be totally fine you know i wouldn't have to take this extra care since we got this damn sick fit then it um it was just extra work so far this gate driver seems pretty awesome right you know i don't have to worry about really damaging it and um probably under utilizing it pretty hard right now so again i'll have to get this worked out and then try higher frequencies after that